Today we're going to be looking at this little uh, 8-bit screen. It's 128 pixels by 64 pixels and we're hooking it up to an Arduino. So let's get started. Okay, there's our Arduino and here's the screen. It is a very simple setup. It has got four pins. It's got a ground voltage in, which will be going to five volts, and then it also has uh, two analog. A it's a SCL and SDA. So let's go ahead and get these hooked up. So first, I'm going to hook the voltage in to our five volts on the Arduino, and our ground to the ground pin on the Arduino. Any of the ground pins there? Now. Uh, now you have your two signals here. Now our, let's see, make sure I'm saying this right, the SCL will be going to analog 5 and the SDA will be going to analog 4. It's important that we're using analog pins here. Don't be going to pins, digital pins 4 and 5. They are different things. Uh, so that's it. That's the, uh, the wiring. Very simple here. So let's go ahead and uh, play around with the programming. Okay, I'm starting off with a fresh install of the Arduino IDE. I'm running Arduino 1.6.9. Let me make sure I choose my correct board, which will maybe be different than yours. Make sure you pick yours. Mine's kind of an older board. And make sure I have the correct port selected. I do. Okay, so now there is a library we have to install. So I'm gonna go to Sketches, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and then in here, I'm going to type in OLED, and I'm going to scroll down and actually, yes, right here. Uh, actually, probably be easier if you type in U8G. So let's type that in just to make sure that the search works. U8G. And we're not going with U8G2, we're going with U8G Lib. Click that, click Install. And then we'll go up to File, Examples, and we'll go down to where it says U8 LGB, and we'll start off with a simple Hello World. Now, we need to choose the proper, there's lots of screens, as you can see them all listed here, uh, lots of screens that work with this library. Uh, we're going to choose this one right here. We just need to uncomment the correct one right here. So this is a uh, U8 GLIB SSD 1306. It's 128 by 64. And we're going to pick this one right here. It's uh, the one that is, if you search that, it will be the fourth one down. Uh, it's the one that doesn't just have numbers for the pins. It's the first one that actually has a little variable set there, it seems like. So once that is uncommented, and actually all these other commented stuff if you were to make your own code and get rid of because they're all just different screens with different resolutions and whatnot. But once we have that selected, we should be able to just click Upload and it's going to compile. And when it's done compiling, it will upload to our Arduino. Uploading. And let's see how that looks. And there we have a basic Hello World. Now, there are other examples, so let me load up another example for us to look at from that same library. This one here is a simple little uh, logo example that is provided with the library. And all I had to do is the same thing, uh, load up the example and go down and uncomment the proper line for this board. So here's a fun little example. This is their console example. Again, I loaded up the, um, uh, the example code, comment, uncommented the line for my screen, and I made one little change, uh, letting it recognize the proper new line character, but now I'm going to uh, just run a command on my computer to list all files uh, in my home directory and pipe the output of the file names to my serial port, and when I hit enter, it very slowly displays all the files. I know you can't really read that, and that's fine, but those are, uh, it's basically the list command uh, listing out all the uh, files from my desktop computer. So I'm going uh, from my desktop computer, piping a list of all the files through my USB serial to the Arduino, and the Arduino's telling the screen to display those, that text on the screen. So that's a fun little one. So you can, you can pipe whatever um, text you want from your serial console to this screen, which could be useful for some projects. 
Well, I'm very happy with this little screen. There are a lot more examples that come with the library. Uh, this actually, this screen, maybe it was just where I bought it. I bought it off eBay. I'll try to remember to put links in the description. Um, was a little more expensive than, than like my larger color screens. And this is just a white one. They do come uh, in different versions, similar screens to this. I may get one. This one was like five or six bucks where I can get color screens that are larger, uh, that are touch screens uh, for about that price. But this one is very simple to use. Um, it, it again only has the four pins, the voltage ground, and then the two signal wires. Um, and it's also very small, so if you wanted to make maybe a smartwatch or something. I was hoping to use this uh, with an ESP8266. I didn't realize that you had to use analog pins with this, so I'm not sure if I can use it with the 8266. Um, but I googled it and saw almost the exact same screen uh, being used with A266, but it had different pins. So I'm going to look into that because uh, I would like to have a project where I make a smart Wi-Fi watch. And I'd like to just have an ESP8266, a screen, and, um, and a battery it and see how that works. I don't think it would be practical as a watch because uh, ESP8266 uh, is a very power hungry thing so I don't think the battery will last very long. Plus my ideas for using it through Wi-Fi as standalone, not connecting to a phone like a lot of smart watches do, um, would mean that once you got out of range of your Wi-Fi it would stop functioning. Um, so I may actually turn that project into a smart clock that you can have on your counter that that you know retrieves time and other information from the internet uh, and displays it in a cycle on the screen there. Um, but I'm still playing around with all my screens. Some of them uh, are practical for the ESP. I'm trying to find a good one that displays things well, that's a good price, that works with the ESP, and then I'll be working on projects like that. But we will be using this screen and many other screens in upcoming projects, both with the Arduino and the ESP8266. So I thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to check out my other tutorials by going to filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description there. You can search through all the videos from both my channels. This is my hardware channel, and I have a channel that mainly focuses on software that I've had up for years. Lots of videos there. If you like my videos and watch them regularly, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com forward slash melx1000. There you can become a patron, and uh, you know, for a little as a dollar a month, you can help support me, and there's different ranges where you get to vote on topics for videos, get early downloads uh, of the videos, so you don't have to wait each week for the next one to come out. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the support. If you can't support me financially, or if you want to do a one-time support, think about going to my website and using the PayPal button. That is useful. I use my PayPal account to buy electronics, so that's kind of my budget for electronics. So more money I get there, more electronics I can buy, more hardware videos I can do. Um, but also, if you can't support financially in either of those ways, think about sharing, liking, subscribing, and commenting. Uh, all those things help out a lot. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.